Sabbath school to wish you a happy Sabbath. And I hope that you have enjoyed the lessons that we have been studying. Um, this has been a very enlightening set of lessons about the Psalms. You know, we, we, we have learned that we, we pray, we pray the Psalms. We sing, we sing the Psalms. We worship, we worship with the Psalms. And the Psalms tell us about the creation. They tell us about the power and the majesty of God. It covers just about everything. In the Psalms, there is Jesus. So we, we, we had a wonderful study. And this week we have come to the last of, of this series of lessons on the Psalms. And this one is saying, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Now, I know that each and every one of us here have had some experience of waiting on something. And I think two, two, two things that comes to mind when we wait. The anticipation for whatever we're waiting for, that, that stirs us up. And then while we are waiting, when we're hoping that when it does come, it's exactly what we have been waiting for. <laughs> So that's the, I think those are two very important things that we need. Let me just um, introduce you to our, 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 um, our panelists, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves, starting with, that, uh, with the person on my extreme right. Uh, my name is Selwyn Carrington. I'm good, happy to be here with you this morning. And next to me. Good morning. My name is Shadel Naya Compton. Happy Sabbath, and it's good to be fellowshipping with you today. Welcome, Shadel. Next. My name is Sandra Grant, and it's a privilege to serve in this capacity. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Raymond Aina. I'm your humble servant. All right. So, we have been, like we said, we've been studying about waiting on the Lord. So, Sister Grant, you are the one who's going to tell us about this waiting thing. What does waiting on the Lord entail, and what are you doing some of the things that you do to demonstrate that you are waiting on the Lord? Okay, thank you so much for this question. Um, waiting, in essence, is, is the action of staying where one is or delaying action until a particular time or until something happens. Um, waiting on the Lord entails a few things. Standing fast, pressing forward in faith, growing in the knowledge of his commands for us. Uh, Psalms 27 verse 14 says, which is our memory text, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Um, in the waiting stage, we often do a few things. Seeking spiritual strength, being patient, studying his words, engaging in earnest prayer, Pray on in praying until something happens, being watchful, watching in expectancy and are prepared for unexpected answers, sharing God's words with others. Um, waiting on the Lord is an act of full trust and faith. It transforms our gloomy evenings with the expectancy of the bright mornings. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, when we wait on the Lord, the wait does not go unnoticed. When God sends his answer to what we are, are, are seeking in the midst of our wait, he sends the best. We don't wait in idleness, desperation. We wait in hope and eager expectation of how he will fulfill his promises. Amen. We wait in peace and full assurance of Jesus Christ and his soon coming. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Wait. I think waiting is definitely, um, how do you say this, a patient building phenomenon, if yes. you want to put it that way. Uh, most of us don't like to wait, especially in the generation that we now live in, which is the now generation. Everybody wants to get what they can, you know, can what they get immediately. Uh, uh, you have your choice of 
uh, hold a pickle, hold a lettuce, or whatever it is. <laughs> and, right. We have this immediate gratification kind of uh, society that we live in. So I think waiting is becoming foreign to uh, the behaviors of even Christians. Right. We, we definitely don't like to, to wait. But, but there's a purpose in waiting. Yes. And I, I, I believe um, Sandra has really brought up some good points. Um, uh, and I really like the concept of the patience that it builds in us, helping us to trust God. And I, I, I think that that dimension of waiting is something that every Christian need to, needs to embrace. You know, we know of examples of people who didn't wait, from Abraham to, you know, all, all the way down, you know. And um, when you don't wait, you get in trouble. Amen. So it's always Amen. good to learn to wait on God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, um, Brother Aina, we want you to, 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 to look at, why we have just looked at that, that what's involved in this waiting process. What are the spiritual lessons that the Lord intended us to learn um, in this call of waiting on him? Because he called us and he tell us to wait for him before he left um, when, he, when he met with his disciples on the, on the mount before he went up to heaven, he said, wait and I will come back. So what are the spiritual lessons that he wants us to learn in this call to wait? Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. What spiritual lessons can we learn from waiting on the Lord? As ably put by Sister Grant and Elder Carrington earlier, Waiting is a phenomenon, a specific phenomenon that our Lord wants to teach us all. So, what can you learn by waiting? The Bible says that, I think it's in Romans chapter, uh, yes, in Romans chapter 3 verses 4 to 5, it says that if you wait on the Lord, you will, you will learn patience. Mm -hmm. And along with patience, you will learn hope. Along with hope, you're going to learn something called perseverance. Perseverance, as we all know, is a function of patience. Mm -hmm. But it is something that causes you to, as the lesson puts it, leave your situation in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> what am I talking about here? All right, let me practicalize it. You're a servant of the Lord. Let's say you want a particular job and you pray to the Lord earnestly about this job. Lord, I would like to have this job. So and so and so. And what I would do if I have this job? The Lord says, this job is not for you. I would like you to wait. What can you learn spiritually from this? The patience that you will now learn, as God will reveal to you later on, is that had he given you this job, you would have profaned his name. He could see the end from the beginning. Another spiritual lesson of, of, of perseverance. You're married. And you would like to have children. And you may or may not have a miscarriage depending on the situation. The Lord says to you, my son, wait. My child, please wait. What, what, what is the spiritual implication here? you're going to rear a generation. This, this child or these children will be generations that should be raised to praise the Lord. And if you are not ready to be a parent, this generation will be raised up not praising the Lord, not serving the Lord. So the Lord will say, wait. Or he will say, no, this is not for you. No, these are exceptionally difficult times in one's lives. You will cry plead with the Lord like David did when, 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 when God took some of his, 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 his uh, children because he disobeyed the Lord. Like Abraham did when, when Abraham said, you know, I, I can't wait anymore. When, well, Sarah said she can't wait anymore and, and she put the situation there. So the, the waiting is something that is exceptionally good for us. Why? It gives us the hope. Ultimately, all of us, we need to wait on God for salvation. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we all want to be saved in his kingdom. So spiritually, he wants to tell us that regardless of what our trials are in this life, he has something greater for us. 
and that is what we should always have at the forefront of our mind, regardless of what our situation is. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's another thing that, that is really important in this aspect of waiting. And while you, you mentioned the idea of perseverance, but I think trust is very important too. Yes. And, and, and when you're waiting and you, and you persevere, you trust this God to fulfill the promises that he made. And, 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 and this trust involves also a level of confidence in him yes. because you know that he is a promise keeper. And so you have a confidence in him that he will keep his promises. Um, Doc, I think you had yes. something to say. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, th this idea, as I said before, of waiting uh, is really intended to teach us lessons in our walk with God. Yes. yes. And uh, when we wait, we... Like, as you said, we tr tr learn to trust and we find the way to righteousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is only in waiting that we can become fully righteous as we saw in the life of Jesus Christ. You know, this morning you sang a song as we began Sabbath school this morning, Near the Cross. And the last verse I, of that song says, Near the Cross, I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting, ever. Till I reach the golden, as you said, Raymond. Yeah. Till I reach the golden strand, just yes. beyond the river. The, the ability to see that and to recognize that waiting does something in us mm -hmm. to, to build us up and make us ready for that golden strand. Amen. And and Amen. and I, I believe that we have to learn that uh, behavior to trust. Abraham didn't trust; it causes some trouble, you know. And when we don't trust, it causes us trouble too. So hope and trust in trusting ever is the kind of uh, spiritual development that we need to uh, uh, have as we seek to get closer to Jesus Christ. I see um, Chanel um, has been waiting to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, you know, I'm a farmer, and, uh, yes, that is true. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of what we're saying here resonates with me as a farmer because, you know, one of the fundamental things that we need for life is food. Yes. And although we think of food as just getting food from the supermarket, food comes from the soil. Yes. And farmers have to plant the food yes. and plant the seed mm -hmm. and then wait yes. and pray yes. and persevere yes. and trust yes. and work. Yes. You know, and that analogy is so close to what we experience in our spiritual life because, you know, we do all of this and then the morning comes and we can reap the fruits of our labor. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, it is so ironic that waiting and patience are linked together because in waiting you have to have patience. There are, there are people who, who ask the Lord for something and they do not want to wait for the results mm -hmm. or the answer to the to the to to the to the request that right. they have made. So so patience and waiting is is is, is related. Very, very In wait, yes. <laughs> waiting you have to have patience. Even it's for a short time or sometimes it's for a longer period of time. So patience we have to um stay. Elder, let me wrap it up by saying this. I, I misquoted earlier. The, the text is actually Romans chapter five verses 3 to 5, and it says, and patience produces character, mm -hmm. and character produces hope, mm -hmm. and this hope will never disappoint us, because, because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts, and he gave us his love through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, basically what this is saying is, in, the, in a practicalized sense, for us to gain muscles, we must put some resistance to these muscles, yes? Our spiritual muscles, for them to be developed, we must exercise patience. And what does God give us? Troubles. <laughs> I, I, am I talking right? You're talking God right. gives us troubles because you cannot develop patience without some tests. Everything that is going to be godly will be tested. Amen. Every human, every situation will be tested. And that's how the spiritual muscle is developed. Yeah, Let I'm us remember, brethren, when the fiery trials try us, the trial of our faith worketh patience. patience. Amen. And, and that's why I like the farming analogy, you know, because yes. when you plant the seed, you don't get the mango. No. <laughs> you have to wait for that transformation process to occur. And as that transformation process occurs, then we are able to finally get the mango. You know, nobody wants to eat a mango seed, you know, but you'd like 
we like the mango. So, <laughs> so I, I think when we wait on the Lord, he transforms us and yes. makes us into this being that is fitted for glory, fitted for hope, for a place with him in glory. Amen. And I, I love that transformation process that occurs also. Too. You see, so Chanel talked about the, the, farming, the farming analogy. I know you're a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love it. I really love it. But, but, but then... The psalmist now hit me with another one. This analogy of a weaning baby. <laughs> I, I, and I, I want you to tell us about this one now. How is the belief that we are children of God likened to the mother, to the, the metaphor of, of, of a weaned child with its mother, as we see in Psalm 131? <laughs> well, I, I have a few grandchildren in my house. <laughs> <laughs> right now, and I, 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 I know of that weaning process, you know, um, as um, uh, the Erickson, the famous uh, psychologist says, um, the, a child must develop this trust versus mistrust uh, dynamic during this er early stage of life, and as we seek to get that developed in us, where we want the child to become, uh, a, a, to, to get a certain degree of independence, as it were, but that independence leads to interdependence on those around him or her. But that interdependence is particularly uh, pointed to the mother, you know. So when a, a, a child is weaned, even though that child is able to eat on his own and put on certain clothes on its own and stuff like that, the child is still dependent on mom to provide all those things and he or she knows where to go to get those things from mom. So when we are weaned, as, as it were, in our uh, own personal uh, development, we learn to feel comfortable in God's embrace. And, and as we feel comfortable in God's embrace, we're able to depend on him for everything that should come in our lives. And this is very important in waiting. When we wait, we want to be dependent on God. Because he may say, no, he, as some children get to learn from their parents, mom may say, you can't have this right now. You know? um, he may say, no, he may say, yes, he may say, wait. And as we go through these phases of or inter uh, personal development with him, we recognize that he only has the best for us. That's like mom has the best in, for her child. We know that he only wants us to succeed. We know that he wants to transform, transform us into the person that he wants us to be, to live with him in glory. So we know that as the Bible says, he's working all things for our good. And, and as we learn to depend on him, we become the full grown person that he wants us to be in his love. And, and I, I hope that through the weaning that we go through, that we will learn to forget our personal ambitions or pride or uh, the, the things that we want and learn to depend on what God wants for us. Because we can become so sidetracked by the things that this world offers. And I see that so much in our world today. The, the world offers a lot and Kids, uh, people uh, gravitate towards what the world offers and not to what God offers. But when you're dependent on God, you can be content. As the Apostle Paul says, I've learned to be contented in every single state that I'm in. And, and we can praise him and depend on him always. Amen, amen. I, I'm, I'm going to share a little confession here as I, as I, as I uh, talk about this reading process. I remember when my, when my wife had her first child. And, and, and I remember seeing him in her arms and, he, and he, he's breastfeeding and he's so content and it's like, it's like he's looking at me like, she's all mine now. I got <laughs> and, and there was some jealousy <laughs> in me. Like, he's so content that he's he got her all for himself and like, I got to sit and wait and wait. Until <laughs> and and this, is, this is what it showed me, that this winning child also, that God is teaching us a level of peace. Yes. Peace and contentment that you mentioned. Amen, now. Amen, peace amen. and contentment because he knows that mom is providing for me. Not just providing food, but providing comfort. And that's what God does with us during our wait. When we trust him faithfully, he gives us peace and contentment in our wait. Knowing because we know that he will deliver. <laughs> you know? Then we, we also learn to depend on him through every stage, you know, yeah. as we wean, we're going into eating, you know, 
solid foods. We know that our yes. mother is going to do what is best for us, and so God will as well. Amen. Amen. We learned a quick lesson the psalmist taught us. David was at the stage of his life when he wrote Psalms 131, where he had accomplished almost everything he wanted to in his kingdom. And now God gave him the vision of building the temple. And he was so ready to build the temple. Lord, let me build you a temple. And then the Lord said to him, Yes, David, you may gather all the material. But this time, it's your time to wait. And David wrote this psalm because he wanted us many years down the road to remember and to realize that there's some things God will allow us to do in serving him. And there's some things he will allow us to fortify and, and strengthen those who are coming ahead. Amen. So, 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 so the young ones, we pour into them. We, we do the best for them. We strengthen them. And especially, like the Apostle Paul said, when Jesus said to, to, to Peter, he said, when you're converted, strengthen those, like those who are weak. Mm -hmm. Strengthen those. We pour into them Amen. and we build them up in the name of the Lord. Amen. There is, um, Brother teacher, there okay, is, after we mm -hmm. There is something that's in the lesson there that says, um, through weaning us from insubstantial ambitions and pride, yes. God introduces us to the nourishment of solid food. My mm -hmm. sister mentioned the solid food, which is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Amen, amen, amen. And the comment I was going to, is related to that because in doing that, we learn to strengthen others. Yes. And, and, and the, 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 this process of waiting is not just something for us, mm -hmm. but it's something to benefit others. Mm -hmm. Because Elder Walker waited, I... I've learned, I, I have taught to be strengthened by his way mm -hmm. so that I can become a better person and I too can learn to wait on the Lord. Because Selwyn Carrington waited, his children can learn from his example how to wait on God. So we strengthen others in the distresses that they go through also. So this becomes quite important in our lives. You, and you, you just helped me to segue into my next question, <laughs> you know, as we're strengthening others. You know, the, the, the Bible says, the, um, the, the psalm talk about us also sowing in, in tears, you know, but then we're gonna weep in joy, bringing in the sheaves. So, so, so let's look at what does this bringing in the sheaves mean to, 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 to you individually, and anyone can answer this, and how do you practice it in your own daily living? Bringing in the sheaves. I'll start. Um, bringing in the sheaves. Um, traditionally meant bringing in the harvest. And we have a far, some, some farmers here, <laughs> so they can explain that a little bit deep, more in depth to us. But when we, um, when we have planted, we always want to harvest. So we want to make sure that we are indeed bringing in those things that we have harvested, and we want to make sure that that harvest is a meaningful one. We don't want to plant and not reap nothing. Amen. You don't want to, you know, I, I remember uh, the first seven years I had, I had my avocado tree. It did not bear anything. And I was, <laughs> I was tempted to cut it down. But the Lord said, give it one more year. <laughs> and I could tell you the sheaves were abundant in that seven <laughs> <laughs> in that year. So we, we, we definitely love this dimension to occur in our lives. But in the, the spiritual sense, uh, bringing in the sheaves also means bringing in a harvest of souls. Amen. And that's what we are, what we should be about as the people of God. Mm -hmm. We want to see people come into the kingdom of God. We want to see people get to know him, get to grow in him, get to succeed in him. And when we see other uh, Christian persons developing into the people that God wants us to be, uh, it makes us proud. For instance, um, uh, personally, I, I, I mentored Elder Walker a lot in his development here at our church. And when I see him grow up to be such a powerful preacher, such an uh, a eager evangelist, and such an apt teacher, those kinds of things make me proud because I was able to see the work of God manifested in his life. When we bring in those sheaves, it, it makes us happy. That, that we have been working for God and that, that, that we are doing his will. I'll stop there let somebody else take over. Um, um, 
you mentioned bringing in the sheaves. I mean, it's like a Bible worker um, is working with a, with a candidate for mm -hmm. baptism. And then after the word is being presented to that particular candidate, we think that once we are finished with that course, then the candidate is ready mm -hmm. or is supposed to be ready. And then we get so um, impatient mm -hmm. and, and say, oh, it's time for them to. But maybe it's not at the time that that person will be ready. Right. So there's a process um, in bringing in the sheaves. They, it may take um, five years or 10 years or less or more. So we have to have that patience. Their patience come in again in bringing in the sheep. So we have to, to have that patience that in order patience to patience and dependent and on the on Holy it. Spirit to make the conversion. Yes. yes. One of the points that came across to me in this bringing of the sheep is there's a song that says, and they'll know that we are Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the most important things that people observing us will get is how we treat each other. Yes. Yes. Because nobody wants to come and be a part of a group yeah. where people are always bickering and fighting and mm -hmm. there's di division, you know, disunity of, of, of magnitude. Mm -hmm. What they want to see is that we care about them. Mm -hmm. Jesus showed this in his examples. He cared about people. So when he cared about them, he fed them. When he cared about them, he spiritually fed them mm -hmm. and then they were like, yes, Lord. Here am I, send me. So our example is here. We need to do the same. So, so in other words, what you, what you guys are telling me, this waiting process is also a very active one. It's not one that we sit down and just chill out, you know, but it's working in bringing others to come to know Christ so that they can partake of this, this great culmination that Chanel is going to tell us about. You know, because we know that there's a purpose for this waiting. And what is the culmination of this waiting? And how does it relate to our faith and our hope in Jesus? Well, I think this is the sweetest part, you know. <laughs> I say it's the topping on the ice cream because joy comes in the morning. And that's what we are all waiting for. It's a beautiful promise that God gave us. And he gives us that promise throughout the Bible. You know, if we look at the text in Thursday's lesson, both in the New and Old Testament, he shows us the, you know, the power of his, you know, redemptive, his redemptive power and how that is going to be revealed in the morning. You know, so it is through that faith and trust and hope in God that we are going to enjoy that metaphorical morning. You know, um, for me, I think the devil gets the best of me when I'm sleeping. You know, when I am up, my faith is strong. I can pray, you know, and, uh, you know, I am very positive. But when I'm sleeping, you know, he puts these thoughts in my head. I'm, you know, I, my sleep is interrupted because I am, you know, the, the, my issues, my problems, my projects, you know, money issues, family issues. It's playing around in my head. And so my, night, my sleep is sometimes troubled. But thank God, glory to God, when that morning comes and I wake up, Amen. the devil doesn't have me because, you know, I am strong in the Lord. And, you know, at... At this time now, when we're thinking about Easter, you know, and uh, the, the um, crucifixion and resurrection, we, are, we should also think about the fact that Jesus also waited yes. and look at, you know, his example of waiting because he had to um, believe and have faith and trust God that on that resurrection morning, he yes. would wake up. Yes. And so with that trust and faith, you know, in his heart, he, you know, he did what he was designed to do yes. and rested in the Sabbath day, yeah. you know, and glory to God on that Sunday, he rose up again yes. um, and what a beautiful day that was. And because of that, now we have that hope of everlasting life. So let us hold on to God's promise yes. that joy cometh in the morning. Amen. 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 You know, that there's a song that says, in the morning, the sun's going to shine. Yes, yes. I, I, and when I, when I think about that, I'm not thinking about the S-O-N. Because in the morning, we're talking about this great morning. Yes. The S-U-N is going to shine because he's going to be the bright and shining star in the morning. And so 
all our waiting is the is the is the is for this great hope and expectation that will culminate when the Son of God burst the clouds of heaven and come to to take his own and he and we can say, Lo, this is our God. We have long waited for him. And this morning we'll never have another night. Yes. <laughs> there will be no more night to follow this morning. And this is what we're looking for, this great culmination. So it is worth waiting for. Yes. In patience, yes. we have to wait. Amidst the tragedy or the, uh, the challenges of life that we have, it is wait, it is worth waiting on the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, the as uh, was being mentioned, the ultimate culmination is the deliverance that we get from death. Mm-hmm. Oh, there will be no more sorrow, no more sighing, no more crying, no more death, for all the former things will have passed away. And as we go through this life and we endure all these um, obstacles and hurt and pain and destruction and death, yeah, it really brings significant pain to our lives. But, but we know that ultimately... We are, we are going to be all delivered from that. For as Elder Walker says, a great resurrection morning is coming when all this will be over and we will be able to enjoy the blessings that God has prepared us from the foundation of the world. These are not new blessings. These are things that he has put in store for us. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. May God bless you and me to be there on that resurrection morning. Amen. 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 This whole waiting idea, yes, sometimes it can be very taxing to wait. It can be very mind-wrecking sometimes waiting. But it will be worth it all. That is one thing we can, we, we hold on to this hope that it will be worth it all because the promise that God has made to us that he is coming back again. He said, behold, I come quickly. He is coming. He is coming soon, I know. Coming back to this earth again. And the weary pilgrim will to glory go when the Savior comes to reign. Our God does not make promises he cannot keep. He keeps his promise. He is a promise keeper. And so we have to be faithful to him so that when he comes again, we will be ready. Because the, the, the whole waiting thing is for us to be ready. Because we can't, be re- we can't start to get ready when he comes. You know, we have to be ready in our waiting. And so as we wait, we are preparing for his coming and we are anticipating. And I guarantee you, brothers and sisters, whatever it is that he promised, that he will deliver. And most of all, he promised us eternal life and a time to stay and be with him. So we can always be content because we are in the presence of God. Be faithful, my brothers and sisters. You online, be faithful because my God, my God is coming back again. Father in heaven, we are indeed grateful and we are excited, Lord, because we know that you are coming again. We are excited, Lord, because our heart yearns to be with you. We are excited again because in our wait, oh Lord, we are busy helping others to also be ready for your coming. We are excited, oh Lord, because we know that this hope that is in us is that which keeps us. And we know that when you come, you will fulfill your promise to us. We praise you and we thank you and we bless your holy name as we worship you. May we worship faithfully, waiting until you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just want to remind you to do the quiz when it comes up and uh, we'll be seeing you back again next week with the beginning of a new quarter and a new lesson called The Great Controversy. So may God bless you as we look forward to seeing you in Sabbath school next week one more time. God bless.
Good morning, Tabernacle. So happy to see so many of you all here today. I'm Dr. McCalla, and we have a special guest here today that will be giving us some information about a special program that some of our members can benefit from here. Um, she's from FIU. Her name is Nancy Napolitano, and I'm going to bring her right up and give her enough time to explain to you what she has for you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for um, allowing me the time uh, to be here. So I will explain our program, and I do welcome questions. Questions are great. Um, my name, as Dr. McCullough said, is Nancy Napolitano. I am with FIU College of Medicine, the Neighborhood Help Program. And what our program does is it delivers home-centered care to um, the community. So everything is free, it's a free service, and it's um, a comprehensive approach where we send a team of students, medical, social work, law, and nursing to the homes, to your homes. Uh, if you have any legal needs, uh, everything uh, will, be, will be free uh, through our partnership with the FIU Law School. So the law students will be assisting you with any legal needs. The only type of law we do not do is criminal law. Family law, immigration, all that is covered. Um, our medical students will be visiting you four times. One time is the only time in person where they have to go to your home, they do their, um, their visit. The rest of the visits, the rest of the three visits are um, telehealth or on the phone. So there's no need, there's no inconvenience on your part. Um, and then if you are not insured, you um, have access to our mobile units. We have mobile units, uh, FIU mobile health centers that are spread out in different areas of our community. So we have one in Hialeah, we have one in Miami Gardens, one in a mobile home park which is called Royal Country. It's on um, 57th Avenue and County Line. So um, we have that um, North Miami Beach, which is stationed at the public library. So we have the North Miami Beach, the Hialeah, the um, Royal Country, and um, one in Miami Gardens, which is at a, a church on um, Northeast, um, Northwest 7th Avenue and 183rd. Um, and then we have one in South Miami. I know that's way farther south. Um, if you are, if the family happens to not have documentation, that's not an issue. Um, our goal is to um, educate our students, and um, we we are educating them so that when they go into the homes, they understand what the social determinants of health are and the comprehensive approach. Um, I don't think I left out anything. The only two requirements that in order to be part of our program are that you live in one of the areas that we serve. Uh, this area, for example, of Little Haiti is one of our areas. Miami Gardens, Opalaka, North Miami, North Miami Beach, a, a part of unincorporated North Miami-Dade which is close to, um, on 47th Avenue, close to County Line, Miami Lakes, Hialeah Gardens, South Miami, and Coconut Grove. Those are the areas that we cover. If you live in an area that I didn't mention, unfortunately, you can't be in our program. Unless you want to use someone's address that you know that lives in one of those areas I mentioned. Um, so that's one requirement. And the second requirement uh, is that you are receptive to our medical students. That is the most important requirement because it's part of their learning. It's part of their education. So if you can't accommodate that one visit and then their phone calls, then maybe it's, you know, it's, it's not a good fit. Um, and they're, they're going to be call, they're going to be doing those calls again just for the, the minimum, which is, you know, one in person, and then the other four visits are, are, are telehealth. 
Um, and if you have a doctor, if you have health care, we aren't replacing that. It's just another layer of health care. Um, so it's not like we're taking away your doctor or anything like that. And that's it. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yes. How, great question. So I have cards. Those of you that are interested, let me know. I'll give you my card. Um, I'll write down my cell. It, or, and or, um, I, if you're really interested in participating, you live with, in one of the areas, I can take down your name, address, and phone number. And that way we can, you know, if you're really interested, then we can start that process and I can um, start the process to get you enrolled. So let's say someone is interested, you give me your information. The next step would be someone from our team, which is the outreach team, will call you to make an appointment to go and enroll you. They're gonna enroll you at your home. So that's why I would need your um, phone number and address. Yes, Rhonda. Yes, yes, Rhonda made a very good point. If let's say um, you don't wanna do it today, you can, um, you can call me and I'll, you know, I'll take down your number and you know, it can be done another day. Yes. Yes. No, it's for at, from zero to a hundred or how, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. They can, thank you. Um, if you're interested in the program, you can contact um, Rhonda through the Vision uh, Clinic and let her know and then she will uh, do the referral. Any other questions? Do you want to go? Good morning, Tabernacle. This is a joint venture with Albert C. Pierre Community Service Center and our Rhonda, Rhonda Alliances with the Vision Care Center. This is a partnership that we've inventured on here with the FIU Health and Medical Team to provide services to our community and our members. Um, we're going to have a flyer in the, in the lobby also where you can get more information or download the information needed to get in touch with Nancy and her team. Um, this is services that we are getting for you, and this is at no charge to you. Um, you may have family members that also may need medical assistance or care, or legal assistance Correct. as well. Correct, um, and behavioral health. And behavioral health as well, also, that where you don't have to come out of pocket for. And these are services that can help you better your life and your whole well-being on a, on a, a hold. All right, um, Pastor, is there anything you, have to, you want to say? Good morning, everyone. I'll say it again, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. This is a great venture, is it not? We want everyone in our community to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and I know that with, between Rhonda's Eye Alliance, uh, between uh, Albert C. Pierre and uh, FIU and all the different um, entities that we partner with, this is a great one because we're able to offer health care to those who are in our community. Um, I know that Dr. McCullough also has something he would like to share. And so, Doc, if you would please uh, come forward and share this venture. Um, I think everything that needed to be said is, is said already. Thank you for partnering with us. Uh, we welcome the working with you all and your team. Um, I just wanted to let you all know there's also another flyer. This is just an announcement. Northside is having a, a weekend, a health retreat weekend. And I just wanted to, we have a lot of that going on here at our church also, but if you can get there Friday night and on Sunday, they have a special cooking class. For anyone who wants to, to be participate or be a part of the cooking class, it's a $10 fee. Put it in a tithe envelope and just give it to me and we'll get it to them to make sure you're registered because it's a limited space. All right, have a wonderful Sabbath. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Easter. 
I can't be here and not say a couple things. So I want to remind everyone, uh, well, first of all, what's important is that Nancy and I worked 15 years ago, and she called me up and she remembered me, so that's a good thing. And second of all, remember the Vision Clinic, come out, get your eyes checked, and anything to do with this program, you can always come back to me, and I'll make sure that you understand on Nancy's behalf. Thank you. Can we say amen, church? Amen. amen, amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Nancy. At this time, we're getting prepared for the announcements, some announcements, and then we're going to transition to our morning service.